this vine is Anchote, Cassinia abyssinica, which is native to Ethiopia, as far as I can figure, and I've never grown it before this year. I've been trying to study it, take a lot of pictures, and record it. These fruit have been on here for months now. I don't know when they're ripened. I haven't seen much change in them. At some point, I have to assume that they're ripe and take the seeds off and see what happens. But the plant is remarkably vigorous. It grew up this trellis, and then it broke the trellis, knocked it down, and kept going. It has stopped flowering for the most part. It's a few flowers here but it's basically done. I have pictures of flowers from earlier in the season and more immature fruit but as you can see it's cruising along right up to frost with very little disease. Yeah there's some disease here but considering this is a Curcurbitaceae which are normally obliterated by disease this isn't bad and I think a lot of the spotting here is actually more like insect damage and not fungal or bacterial problems pretty vigorous but the real reason you grow this is down here right here there is a root and there's an edible potato like root that once cooked supposedly has a bland neutral potato like flavor and is usually cooked served with butter and this seems pretty excellent to me because you can grow these guys from seed each year easily. It produces an extremely abundant amount of seed. As long as these produce a reasonable harvest, I have no idea how big these roots are below ground. Hopefully they're pretty good size. If they're small, it would be pretty sad. But I don't intend to dig this until after the plants are killed by frost. Some of the literature I've read says that they will survive a light frost. If they would, that would be remarkable. But this definitely has some potential because the deer and groundhogs and such don't seem to bother this plant at all. Insects don't seem to bother it. Disease hasn't seemed to bother it. And it would be a, you know, a staple starch that you could easily grow from seed in one season and save seeds. So I have a feeling I'm not gonna be real pleased with the harvest, although I think these were not in the best spot and it was really hot and dry for a while. And I get the sense that that was not so much to their liking. I did make some observations that when it was uh, cooler, really cold, that they weren't happy, but really blazing hot, they weren't that happy either. So we'll see what happens. But I think they're worth another try regardless, unless they taste terrible. We haven't tried them yet. If they taste good, they're definitely worth a larger trial and see what happens. So I'll definitely get another video here once we actually harvest and eat these. But I want to do this before I actually dig anything. These are the fruits of the anchote, the Cassinia abyssinica. And I was really curious all season if they would ever obviously show some signs of physiological maturity or ripening. And they finally did, although only a handful did. It was right before frost in late October. It's only the ones that were in full sun. So you can see they turn an orange color and some of them have gotten quite soft and I think they're really kind of rotted but probably still seeds are good so on these orange ones I'm positive the seeds are good I picked several buckets of these green ones I'm definitely not convinced the seeds are mature on these but who knows I guess we'll try 
and keep these separate from the other ones. I have not tasted any of these yet. I don't know if they're edible or not. I've read conflicting reports about that. So maybe I'll try a little bit of a green one and then a little bit of a orange one. So here goes for the green one. Hmm. There's really nothing good about this. It's not sour or bitter or astringent. It just tastes like nothing. There's a very slight, weird, kind of a clean, chemical, citrusy sort of a taste or smell. Very odd. Not really very pleasant. And it's extremely hard. In consistency. I should add that both me and my daughter both, uh, as far as we can figure, these yellow ones smell kind of citrusy. It's really strange. They sort of smell like a orange or lemon cleaner. It's not super strong. If you pick one up, you can definitely smell it. So I'm going to try one of these ripe ones and see if they taste any different. The skin's no different, but look, on the inside, the interior has turned red. So maybe this is a bit like a bitter melon. Uh, let's open this up and see what it looks like on the inside. Okay, so I've opened one of these up, and this is definitely really weird. You can see it's so orange-like in terms of the consistency of the peel and the way the peel looks. It's just everything about it is like an orange and honestly it kind of has a really faint orange smell and you can see the gel around the seeds surrounding the seeds has turned red so totally like a bitter melon i'm going to try these and i'll let you know what they taste like Holy crap, not good. They taste not good. Wow. Uh, the initial flavor, I would describe the initial flavor as very bland orange rind uh, or grapefruity, but then later on it's more of a very strong bitter citrus, uh, bitter grapefruit, or even if you've ever tried hearty orange, uh, upon Cyrus. Oh man, it's really similar to that. It's just this really intense bitter citrus sort of uh, flavor and aroma. Kind of horrible, but it must be attractive to something as this seems like maybe birds perhaps. I don't know. Pretty, pretty dreadful actually. But in any case, I thought I should document this for the sake of uh, educational purposes. Who else has eaten one of these. I don't even think the Weird Explorer guy is eating one of these, so. This is the uh, Anchote Harvest. I suppose this is fairly respectable. There are six plants. Each plant makes basically one big root. You can see there's tremendous variation here. Or this one, which is basically the size of an apple. This is the smallest, and this one, which is a huge monster here. I mean, this is certainly an excellent yield. And then these three are sort of all in between. This one is really crazy, right? Look at this. It looks like a human heart, like an anatomically accurate human heart. It's really strange, sort of uh, eerie right after Halloween. I mean, look at this thing. The way the these side roots look like arteries and veins. Really crazy. In any case, 
I don't see much of a rhyme or reason to why some of these got larger than others other than just genetic variations because they were all in the same conditions. And I did try some of these. I had saved a pot indoors um, and I dug that up a week or two ago and tried it. And these are quite good actually. They are very potato-like. Maybe I would say they're about 75% like a potato and about 25% like yuca or cassava. It's a blandish to somewhat pleasant tasting, fairly firm textured, yellowish white root. It's, you know, perfectly, perfectly good. There's nothing weird about the taste or the texture at all. It could easily be a main staple crop. You know, the benefit to these is that you're growing these from seed in one season and you can keep growing them from seed so you're not going to have any sort of a virus or disease carry over and they seem to have no insect or disease problems to begin with. Um, they seem rather heat and drought tolerant. I don't know how these things are going to keep so that'll be the next thing here is how do these things keep and can you mash them? Can you fry them? I don't know. I just boiled the one I cooked before and that was perfectly fine. So we'll see what we can actually do with these things. And But on the whole, this is a completely viable crop for this area and probably for a lot of areas. I don't think this crop needs to be restricted to Africa. This could be grown many places and it would be a perfectly reasonable staple starch. Some of these roots are definitely, I think, would be considered kind of a nuisance to peel or clean, but it's a pretty nice plant. It's definitely tasty and it's reasonably productive. I mean, I would say that the productivity is on par with a lot of potatoes, but I think an excellent potato variety or an excellent sweet potato variety would out yield most of these, except for the larger one here. But. We'll continue this as time passes and we'll keep updating this video log. It's about a year after I first started recording my video on growing on Chote. And after having had another year, I have some interesting things to add. So last year I picked everything off the fruit. That is, I picked all the fruit off the plants as they turned orange. I left all the green fruit for the most part, not all of it. Some of it that I thought was pretty well mature I did pick, but I left a lot of it on the plants and then they frosted, died and dropped to the ground. This was where it was grown last year. And in June of this year, 2020, I saw some seedlings start popping up in here. The fact that we had seedlings when I'm positive, I picked out every single orange fruit and every single fully sized and older green fruit tells me that there would still have been some seed viability in the greener fruit, smaller fruit. It probably wasn't as good as the fully physiologically mature fruit, but it's not zero. Second thing I can learn from that is that they're capable of surviving a winter as seeds and then germinating when the temperatures got to the right stage, which was extremely warm. This summer was really hot and really dry, and I didn't have a really great way to irrigate this stuff. They were actually growing kind of in the pathway. I did have drip irrigation set up in the rows, but the pathways were unirrigated and there was pretty heavy competition from corn and beans in this row at the time. So most of the seedlings ended up dying, but one of them lived and you can see there's a root here. The one that lived, this plant grew easily eight to 10 feet in all directions and flowered, but didn't really set any fruit that I had noticed. So I want to dig this up now 
to get a sense of what they will do if they're not transplanted. Because last year I transplanted them because I wasn't sure that you'd be able to get a crop by direct seeding them without having ever grown them before. So let's dig this up and let's see how big it is. Also, it was a short season. They germinated in June. And then uh, a season-ending frost happened about two weeks ago. So about mid-October. So let's see what we can accomplish here. It's in there pretty good. Yeah. It's strong. trying to be careful with this guy all right I think we got it yeah okay it's not crazy but this is pretty decent I would say you got the mass here of medium to large potato basically. Certainly I could have got this bigger if it had been irrigated, fertilized, not competing with corn. If we had had a longer growing season, that would have helped. So also setting out transplants I'm sure wouldn't have hurt. But a couple things that this proves is it really stresses the adaptability of anchote to climates that are not tropical or subtropical. I mean, this could be a fairly short season crop. Now, I was not able to produce seed off this crop, and I think it's important to remember that. There wasn't enough of a growing season. Having the seeds germinate in June, frost off in mid-October, no seed was produced. So you couldn't do a seed to seed crop naturally. So I think this has, in my climate, no potential to turn into an invasive weed. But you can do a seed to seed crop, as I found out last year in 2019, by setting out well started transplants. So interesting. So I'll be excited to eat this one. These are really pretty tasty. Nothing bad about these guys at all. So here's a final addition to the Anchote experience. So I hope that anyone watching this can learn a lot. I This may be the only video on YouTube regarding the horticultural potential of anchote or the agricultural potential of this in climates that aren't Africa. So I'm in USDA zone 6B in south central Pennsylvania. So very different from Ethiopia where this is native to. And I wanted to say that uh, I want to thank everybody for continuing to watch my videos and subscribe to my channel. It's been a really crazy year. That's saying enough, I'm sure. And I haven't had much opportunity to post or edit much content. And I appreciate the fact that I'm still getting subscribers and views. And I'm not giving up on the channel or stopping. As time permits, I will continue to put videos up. And I have a lot of material recorded that needs edited and I have lots of ideas for other videos in the future. So there's lots of things that I'm always working on. The row over here, the closest row is, it's a root forming mustard. It's Brassica juncia. Uh, bald head mustard is what I bought it as. I'm really interested in that. I'd like to get a video up of that at some point like to get a potato video up and more but yeah this bald head mustard stuff never grown anything like this and 
It's really intriguing. So keep an eye out for a video regarding my experiences with that. So and once again, thank you for watching and subscribing. I do appreciate it. And good luck to all of you. Thanks. Thank you.